Jesus, Lord, in everything. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Are you strong, saints? Amen. Amen. Tomorrow again, bear with me and come back. Yes, Praise the Lord. We will be carrying on with our series. Do you feel helped by eh, these teachings? Vira fasha, du komes. So we must continue. Sawa, ichume rugita to za komes. We will continue next week as well. Ugo muza muza komes mui mui hanga ne muzi ni mubishwa. So keep on coming as much as you can. Ichateje itorogi efeso gu komera ni nigish. What strengthened the church at Ephesus were the teachings. Poroya hagizimia ka ibiri. Paul spent two years in Ephesus teaching daily in a, in a building he had rented from a man called Turan. They spent two years in Ephesus By the time he finished his teachings, the church had been changed, transformed, and they had the power to go forth and change the entire Asia Minor region. That's where they planted the seven churches uh, that the Bible talked about in the book of Revelation. All that started in the church at Ephesus. We'll talk about that in chapter 19 of Acts. In the book of Acts, chapter 19. It's so good to study the word of God. Especially the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because what happened in the times of the apostles is still happening today. For they are all done by one person. That is God. The Holy Spirit is behind every move that we make, every action that we do. Today we are reading from Acts chapter 15. It has 41 verses. But it will speak uh, all about 35 verses. Verse 1, and certain men came down from Judea and told the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. If you recall properly, in chapter 15, those who are coming to teach about circumcision, what church are they coming to? Where are they coming to speak? What church? Antiochia. The church at Antioch. If you Jerusalem, so the church at Jerusalem in Judea was predominantly Jews. Most members were Jews, and so they had all been through the Jewish customs and Judaism uh, traditions. Now, some of the people, some servants of God, evangelists and others, came from that church of Jerusalem and went to the church at Antioch, which was predominantly Gentiles, and told them, unless you get circumcised, then you cannot be saved. But I want you to understand this. Paul and Barnabas are on evangelistic missions. 
the church of Antioch needs to be connected to the church of Jerusalem. When, when Paul and Barnabas spent months away because of preaching, spreading the gospel missions, you remember their journeys, the missionary journeys that they had. In chapter 14, they preached in different cities. The doors were opened and they were able to preach, although they encountered persecution as well. That was their first missionary journey. The church of Antioch is called a missionary church. It's also a mother church for the Gentiles. In other words, the Gentiles felt comfortable and felt at home at Antioch. They got saved and got filled with the Holy Spirit. There is no Jew in their church intimidating them to say God belongs to us Jews, but they failed they had access to that same God as Majority. well. Majority of the church members who are Gentiles. And Paul and Barnabas who were Jews accepted the doctrine because that's what God called them to do. But they had spent some month away. They had gone to Seleucia. They, got to, they went to Cyprus. All the way to Pamphylia. They went to Praga. All the way to Pisidia. They went to Iconium. They went to Lysitra. To Derby. And they planted churches in those places. But in many persecutions. On the way back, they went back to the same cities and they established pastors. They ordained the pastors at Derby. The pastors here are referred to as the elders of the church. They include the bishops. All of them are collectively known as eld church elders. That was the term they were using before. To ordain church elders. This is the pastoral ministry. So they established pastors wherever they went. In, in Lysitra, in Iconium, Pisidia. They come to Praga. All the way to Italia. Now they return to Antioch. They give a report of what they experienced. Remember the church of Antioch commissioned them to go on missions. It had the department of missions. Sending evangelists and sending support to them wherever they were. They would provide all the logistical support needed. So when they came back, they gave a report of what happened. And so during those days, others came down from Judea, from the Jerusalem church. They said, let's go and visit the newly planted churches in other places. Remember the church at Jerusalem in Judea, Judea is predominantly Jews. And they are still struggling with accepting the Gentiles in the faith. It became necessary in chapter 10 for God to bring a dream to Peter. But still there are radicalists in the church who are said they are not accepting salvation. They can't believe that somebody can get saved with that following and respecting the traditions of Moses. And Peter and others are not wasting their time on that because they don't have many Gentiles in their church. They don't want to cause conflicts and arguments because they had no Gentiles in their church. Yes, in chapter 8, Philip preached in Samaria and they saw some Gentiles who got converted. 
In chapter 10 in Caesarea, Cornelius gets converted and his whole household. Although these signs are evident, they are not convincing officially to the apostles. The church hasn't taken a stand on the doctrine to apply here. It is a crisis they are dealing with secretly. Yes, the apostles are somehow comfortable, but they are not satisfied. And so Paul now returns to Antioch with Barnabas. They found that certain men had came down from Judea in Jerusalem. And certain men came down from Judea and told the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. I want you to think about this message. The church is in the spirit. They just received the brethren from the senior church, if I may say. For example, an evangelist leaves Zion Temple here at the headquarters and goes to a branch church in Rusizi. The members of the church at Rusizi and Rubavu trust that what this evangelist is going to say is coming from the senior leaders of the ministry here. In when you give them a microphone to speak, they say, Brethren at Rubavu, I came to tell you that you are not saved. That is a terrible confusion to people. Somebody has come from Kigali. Sent by the bishops. Sent by the servants of God. To come and revive us spiritually. Now they claim we are not saved. It's a big problem. We are not saved. And he said the reason why you are not saved it's because you don't follow all the traditions and customs of Kigali. Things like those. <laughs> you know the people, the people in Gisenya and Rubavu, they mix Swahili. And so you come and tell them, because you are mixing Swahili, you are not fully saved. Every person who claims to be saved must speak pure Kenya Rwanda without any mixture of other languages. Immediately, the hearts of people will receive and respond to such message differently. We are Gentiles. Swahili is a mother tongue. How does one get saved and have to change their language? Others with simple hearts, with easy convicted hearts, they will come and say, okay, we come to repent, we are sorry, we mixed up the language. Because they regard these people highly because they came from Kigali. They are authentic. That was the biggest challenge here. Verse 2. That's Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas, verse 2, had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this very question. Paul stood up. No. He said, no way. We don't accept this message. Although he came from Kigali, we can't accept this. Barnabas says, I joined Paul. I've lived in Jerusalem. I lived with Peter. I am an apostle. I was sent here. I give reports. Those teachings are not true. Imagine the arguments in the church. 
So much argument. Paul began to defend his theology. He said, Jesus revealed himself to me. He sent me to the Gentiles. He never told him they must be circumcised. And Peter himself, he said, now I know that God has not so partiality that whoever believes him and does righteousness, he accepts him. We can't accept this. And the others said, we just came from Jerusalem. Every Jew has to be circumcised. And God is the God of the Jews. And so you have been converted and accepted our God. You must follow our custom. The entire church was just running chaotic. Chaos emerges. His people, they just planted a church. In Jerusalem, there is a church. However, they don't have uh, st- a given standing on doctrine. Why is all this happening? So that rules may be established in the church. So that the church may have order. A church is not a prayer room. A church has order. A church has its mission. Things must be in order. And we must have common understanding. And so there was a lot of conflict. Paul spoke. Barnabas spoke out. Because they are the ones who toil teaching this people. And now they just returned, returned from the Gentiles. They saw them filled with the Holy Ghost. They baptized them. And they ordained something to be pastor. Now how can you say that what you teach is false? There was a big problem. To fight the church of Antioch is fighting the message that Paul and Barnabas have. We just returned from the Gentiles. We made missionary trips in Asia. Gentiles have been converted. We left them with churches. We ordained their their, their sons, our sons as their pastors. And they are not following Jewish traditions. So you mean all that we have worked and done in these days is the same? And so the issue must be resolved in Jerusalem. Let's all travel together and go to Jerusalem and go and face the apostles. He said, what do you mean? And so let's go. That was going to be the first council of the church. The second church, the second council took place in a place called Nisi. That, that was conducted by the fathers of the church. The church fathers. Consider yambere na haya tangi changu se ihuri rodi yambere inumwa zosesi chaye kugerango wale bichele kuto chitoero nimsa ba gomba kwe mezania bika hindu ka doctrine. The first council happened here in chapter 15 by the apostles to study what doctrine should guide the church, a common understanding of all. Let me remind you, this was in about 51 AD. Jesus had died in 33 AD, given our calendar today. And so that was about 18 years after. Paul and Barnaba bagarutse Paul and Barnabas have returned. They returned from missionary trips in, in the year 46 AD. Now they have been in Antioch for about five years and traveling around preaching the gospel. Going to other parts of Syria. At this time they even went to Serbia which is known as Yugoslavia today and so they had trouble there to preach there as well. So Paul is preaching here in the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 
kuva bavuye muri bavuye mu rugendo rwa missionnaire from the time they had returned from their missionary journey kugeza ibi bibazo bibaye to this incident here they had kept preaching the gospel in Romans 15 verse 19 Romans 15 verse 19 in might signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and around about Alericum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Alericum is in modern day Yugoslavia. It was known as Dalmatia back in the days. So Dalmatia had two regions. A part that was one region called Montenegro and North Albania from where Mama Teresa comes from which later became Yugoslavia and Serbia. Geography. That is geography. So Paul preached in all these areas in that period of five years. Now they come to Antioch. He spent about 15 years without going back to Jerusalem. He's ministering among the Gentiles. Gentiles are getting saved. The power of God comes upon them. One morning, the brethren from Kigali or Jerusalem, for that matter, they say, you are all not saved. Paul says, what? This is impossible. The Bible says in verse 2, Verse 2, part B, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. Let us go to the book of Galatians to see the others that they talk about here. Because Galatians is the first book that Paul wrote. Yari matanga example chani yari mo asubira bano kubzawa ye aha muri Antiochia. He was giving an account of some of the things that happened in Antioch. Yekatule mugi tapo chwa Galatia. Let's go to Galatians. Aba Galatia. Nibiche bibiri kumrongo ambere. Galatians chapter two verse one. Are we together? Hashizimia Kachuminine. Ramzumva. Subira Kuza Mukanja. Yerusalemu. Imiaki Chuminine Arirangi. Kumaka Chuminagatano. Awana Kujay. Ichari Kimujanian Ikinizim Haka. Zimogicha Chuminagatano. Chibzakos very doom. Mosubira Yerusalemu. Nikumanand. Ah. Ngova Toranyavan Vavidi Barnaba. Ngonavande. Nabene data. Gonjana Nande Natito Uyu Tito Eri Muri Bene Data Bamwe Batavuzwe Mu Zakozwe Ni Numa Ari Kwa Muba Galatia Donke Barnaba Na Polo Na Tito Chapter 2 Verse 1 Then after 14 years I went up again to Jerusalem With Barnabas And also Took Titus With me So Titus Was one Was one of those That they mentioned As others In Acts 15 Kumurangu Akaviri Basi. <laughs> Ariko umvishe ba abandi bakomeye abandi iyo bavuze ngo ah ibintu Yesu ari mu ndabyemeye ibintu Charles ari mu nta kibazo nange ibintu ye do navuze ndinzo donc harabagenda inyuma y'abantu gutya uri ayemeye okay nanye ndemeye barabafata babandi 
ngo barya abashimwa nabantu bose bafite reputation arabihirera na Paul ababwira ubutumwa yahawe bwa banyamahanga abasoba no kwa banyamahanga nabo bafite umurage ngo wacu abanyamahanga bamenye Yesu nta migenzo y'umubiri riho ntaki nabo bafite Yesu donc ababwira ubutumwa yabwiye kugira ngo atazaruhira ubuse Verse 2 and I went up by revelation and communicated to them that that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. When Paul went, he took on a sad, most influential people and tried to explain to them and defend his case to them so that at least they can influence others because there are people who follow what others believe. This is what happened. Verse 3. Yet, yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Do you know what Paul did? Yes, He brought Titus in a strategic way so that if I preach the gospel when they see a gentile who is not circumcised the preaching in the power of God moves that we will see what the react what direction is going to be Titaras. so Titus comes he preached the gospel Jerusalem. in Jerusalem and they saw the grace of God upon him and they never compelled him to be circumcised do you see how people operated in such highly intelligent thoughts? They had great strategies. Verse, verse 4, why was this? No guta to mude and the zoa to do temuri Christo yes, Kugirango do shire muvata. Verse four, and this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in in brackets who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. Uzuko poravita. Do you know what Paul calls them? Benedata vinyari. The brethren who were they were false brethren who entered secretly. They came claim, claiming to be evangelists, but they were secretly spying out on us. And they had come from Jerusalem. He's mentioning them clearly. Here. Remember in chapter 15 of Acts, he talks about them as some brethren or some men. But Paul explains their character here. He says they are false brethren. Verse 5 of Galatians chapter 2. To whom we did not yield submission even for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Praise the Lord. Titus was with them in evangelism. When they came to Jerusalem, let's go back to Acts 15. Okay. When you read Galatians chapter 2, you see some details from Paul of what happened in Acts chapter 15. Why did Paul begin with this? Don't Paul 
Why was he writing this in chapter 2? It was because in chapter 3 and chapter 4, he was trying to correct the mistakes that the people of Galatia had made by going back to the traditions and customs. And so he wanted to give them a background to understand why he wanted to correct. Because after that, some men came back and tried to influence them to go back to the traditions and move from the faith they had received before. And he said to them, who bewitched you, O Galatians? You began in the spirit and now you are ending in the flesh. These were churches he had planted in Galatia. And so that made Paul to write to them an epistle. And he wrote the letter to the Galatians. Based on his experience. Let's go back to Acts 15. Verse 3. 15 verse 3 Acts. Verse 3, so being sent on their way by the church, this word sent on their way by the church means that the church gave all the finances they needed to support them logistically on the way. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, which is in modern day Lebanon, Sidon and, 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 and and Tyrus were in Phoenicia. It is part of modern day Lebanon. They had come down from Syria in the north. So they traveled through Lebanon. There were churches there as well. Then they went through Samaria. I went together. Voila. Basoba anurira bene data uburyo abanyamahanga bahindukira imana. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. This is how Paul's mission is changing. When they came from Antioch, going to Jerusalem, their message changed. They began to go on their way from Antioch to Jerusalem, Paul and Barnabas and the team embarked on a journey to go to all the Jewish churches to explain to them that even Gentiles had been saved, not necessarily by going through Mo Moses' customs and traditions. Amen. Amen. And so people rejoiced and got saved. The church of Phoenicia, when was it opened? Because it had majority of the Jews. I don't know if you have followed the Bible. In Acts chapter 11, you remember? Verse 11, chapter 11, verse 19 of Acts. Are we together? Verse 11 of Acts. Now, those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. So the believers in Phoenicia are Jews. Now, Paul comes with Barnabas and Titus and others, other brethren who are arguing. They spend a night in Phoenicia. They gather the believers in Phoenicia who are Jews. They give a testimony of what God had done among the Gentiles so that they can convince them that even Gentiles have a share in salvation just like us Jews. 
We must appreciate the Apostle Paul so much. For us to be able to be having the gospel today, he had to fight so much. And remember this. It would reach a point and they would, they would accuse him and say, you never walked with Jesus. That's why he was always defending himself, saying, although I am the least of all, I received the mysteries, the revelation of the mysteries of God. Paul <laughs> So the brethren who were contending for the Gentiles to keep Moses' customs would say, Paul, you are a, you are on your mind, you are on your side alone. There is no way Jesus would not have chosen a Gentile apostle to be among the top. He only chose Jewish apostles. Why are you always defending the Gentiles? You are confused. <laughs> Paul went through so much. Uh, if you go to Galatians chapter 1, Verse 11. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which I which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 15. Pardon. Ah. Iconcile. <laughs> We told Jerusalem. Mwene nyina wandi. Wa Yesu. Ndaba rahirira imbere y'Imana yuko ibyo mbibandikiye ndabeshye. Bukeye nja mu bihugu by'Isiria ni Kirikia. Aha. Amatororo y'Yudaya yo muri Kristo nti bari bazu konse. Geretse kumva gusa abamvugaga bati uwaturenganya gakera noneho ari igishi by'idini yari imburaga kera. Nuko ibyo bigatuma bahimbaza imana kubwanje hashize imyaka 10 ingahe mu gice cy'akabiri nine wala mbona kuzamuka Yerusalemu ndi kumwe na Barnaba na Tito dusubiye urumva hari hashize imyaka 10 ingahe nine ringiye mu mwaka wa 15 concile inis pardo ya 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 Yerusalemu yabaye ku mwaka wa 51 hashize imyaka 18 ariko Paul yari afite yindi tatu Nyuma yimi akita tuni choge ya giyeyi. Nufuwa nguwa chizindi katoro za kumunga kwa chumina kata. 
Il y a une chronologie biblique. Verse 15, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James the Lord's brother. Now concerning the things which I write to you, indeed before God I do not lie. Afterward, I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was unknown by faith to the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they were hearing only he who formerly persecuted us now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God in me. Chapter 2, verse 1. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. Good. Let's go to Acts 15 again. You may keep, keep that chapter open to you. We may go back to others, but that is our main scripture. I know some of you feel bored when we are having such teachings, but bear with us. That's how you learn the Bible. I know some of you want me to bypass all these other references that, that we are referring to in Galatians. If you want me, I can go ahead and preach, but you won't have enough uh, material to keep. Some people to be not just naturally meant for studying. They just feel bored about any study. <laughs> You tell them about going to school, they feel heartburn coming immediately. But knowledge comes through reading. And knowledge is power. When you have knowledge, you become powerful. Turning Chapter 15 of Acts is a very, very pivotal chapter in the history of the church because for the first time, the whole body of Christ, the leaders of the church, uh, both the international and national leaders are going to sit in a council to determine the doctrine of the church. This is very important. That's why I want to spend more time there, not like in other chapters. The second council that took place at Nice, Nicaea, the third one, is a very Jerusalem will happen in Jerusalem next year. And next year, all the apostles of the Gentiles and the Jews will be meeting together in Jerusalem. It will be like a third council. You get Pero, me well? Abanyamahanga n'abayuda bagiye kumvikana no nuko bakorana. 
I want to spend more emphasis on chapter 15 because this is where both the Jews and Gentiles are going to agree on the doctrine of their faith. The word that Paul says in, in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 that the, the wall of the limit that was between the Jews and Gentiles was, was removed by the cross of Jesus. He was referring to this chapter 15. That's when that was removed. If you understand chapter 15 of Acts, you understand most of the episodes of Paul. Because Paul kept defending himself as an apostle, and the key to his message was here in chapter 15 concerning the Gentile salvation. Chapter 15. Forget about all other chapters, but not chapter 15, because this is where the doctrine of the church was grounded. Amen. Amen. Now, now you are a little bit awake, now you understand why. Because I don't want to bother you to, keep, to make you think deeply because you are not theologians, but I wanted you to know the basics here. Eh? Amen. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. We are in which chapter? 15. Verse 6. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. Let's go back to verse 4. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all things that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up, saying it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Ha. Now things are changing here. There are Pharisees who have become believers. They also came to the church in Jerusalem. As I speak here, from the day of the church's establishment, the day of Pentecost, to this day when Paul and Barnabas come to Jerusalem, the church is only 18 years old. It has more than... It has more than... It has about 200,000 members. There is great revival. The Pharisees got saved. The Sadducees got saved. Even a few Gentiles in Jerusalem. Although they are there, they are not considered because the church is bigger than the Jews. And some other Jews who are not keeping uh, the, the Judaism tradition and in the church leadership, there is also Pharisees. So the church has three sections. It has the apostles, the elders, the elders are also pastors. The apostles are the 12 apostles. But remember, James just died. Now they are 11. Now, now you have the church elders. Pastor, the senior pastor is James, Yakoba who is the Lord's brother. He is the senior pastor of the church of Jerusalem. Ba Petero, 
Peter, they advise him. There are apostles seated there. And other influential influence people in the church. They are also included. In the church, there are always influential people. When you, pre you are preparing some things, they will appear. And so in the morning, they see Paul, Paul coming with Barnabas the delegation. Barnabas come. Titaraj. Titus come. And others who are with them. They said, we came because we heard of the argument. I said, okay. Let's call for the leaders uh, meeting. Let's also summon all other influential people in the church. And then we will sit together. Then you tell us the issue. It's as if somebody would come, people would come from no, no, a to Then the bishops would sit and we would invite the party. evangelists and pastors chief of the party. and heads of department the people that you see influential then we, we go in a meeting and we say okay now defend your case that was the first meeting they sat in a private meeting it was for their first time these were issues they had before but they hadn't taken a stand and a, a solution are we together Verse 7. Verse 7. And when Amen. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us, chose me among us, that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you taste God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Listen to this powerful statement. There was a lot of noise. The Pharisees are almost getting no, crazy. No, 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 no. They are saying there is no way. If, if we accept that our God becomes their God, they must be circumcised. We can't accept them to just join freely. So they want to take our God and despise the traditions of Moses. We can't accept that. There was a lot of dispute. Doctrine. The first doctrine is starting here. Because Peter is saying, I myself, by my own mouth, I saw it myself. The God who searches the hearts of men I preached a word to the Gentiles and they got converted and they got filled with the Holy Spirit. I saw it by my own eyes. And God confirmed them with the Holy Spirit. Just like he gave him to us. He never put a distinction between us and them. But he purified their hearts by faith. And then 
Uyu munsi twiye tuvuga ngo izere Yesu rakizwa ico giye aya materiment yarahare nubwa mbere bari mu bashyiraho amajambo ifatizwa amajambo akomeye ngo yabogesheje imitima kwizera umunsi bizeye imana yabogesha ibyaha byabo none kwizera guhinduka kuri twebwe simira imidukiza ahubwo dukizwa niki no kwizera iyi niyo doctrine Paul yavuze mu ba Efeso kabiri Iche ndi chumi, gondi mga kijijwe ni vikorugwa, mga kijijwe no kuizere. Aha, ali mga randika. Pora rabi vuze, Petra rabi vuze, kuizere. Aha, kuizere ni vizi ngenze mga kizi. Doki, barimu wa ashira ho, infatilo zitori. It is here that Peter is establishing the foundation of the doctrine of the church concerning salvation. He is saying that salvation to the Gentiles or to all of us comes by faith and then God purifies our hearts. It is not by our works that we get saved. Just like Paul said in the book of Ephesians that you are not saved by your works but by your faith. And so we get saved by faith. At this point in time, these words were not common. People. So when you hear this statement, he said about three things. Peter said, he spoke about the Holy Spirit. Verse 8. Bizer, abu de kuizera. Imana irondori mitima yaba nu yara ba hamije. Ubu yaba hayumuka weera. Ita ndukanoria eh kugirango ishewe ita ndukanoria chunab. Ahu bo yoge she imitima yabo kuizer. Arabu ka kuizera ijambo umuka weera. Keep that. Verse part B of verse seven. Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word, should hear the word, keep that word, the word of the gospel, and believe, and believe there is faith there. So God who knows the heart acknowledges them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did. Three things, the word, faith, and no cause. And purifying. Yes, yes, yes. He purified the Holy Spirit and faith. We are in Acts chapter eh? Chapter 15. The Holy Spirit, faith, and purification. When Paul wrote to the Corinthians, are we together? Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. Are we together? You will bear with me because you, you must learn. When, when you, when you, Corinthians 11. Verse 11. Ariko kaya developa kuko ari umwentektuere cyane kandi ari mu mwuka wera mwari mumeze kabo ariko mwagize gute mwaruhagiwe mwagize gute mwarejejwe mwatsindishijwe niki numuka w'Imana yacu mu izina ry'umwami wacu Yesu Kristo donc kwezwa gutsindishirizwa kwizera umuka wera biragaruka bifite isano n'igice cya 15 and such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. By the Spirit of our God. Look, but you were washed, you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Holy Spirit of God. So Peter says, I saw it with my own eyes when these people got saved because of believing and the Holy Spirit purified them, washed them. Nuko, niki gitumye mugera gezima ana kumurongo wa chumu. Mwikoreza vigi shukimitu kwa arobaso kukuzabatashu weye kuikorela. Ndetse na atuwe suko. 
Verse 10. Now therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? You are making them bear burdens we never carried ourselves. So Peter here, he says that's putting a yoke on people for no reason. Verse 11, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Amen. Amen. Yes, Praise the Lord. It is by the grace that we are saved. This was a, a huge discussion. Verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12, then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. Because Peter was an apostle and he was a pillar in the church. When they heard his position, they kept silent. When they were silent, he, he said to Paul and Barnabas, speak on. Tell us what happened. Ah, so, in other words, if Peter is supporting this, then I must support. There are people who have no stand in their life. They have what others Or they had been convinced and they became silent. Now Paul defends his case by Gidusa. We went to the city. There was a gentle man who was born lame and He rose up and walked. They wanted to sacrifice to us. They gave us names of their gods. Zeus and Hades. We rejected the name. They stoned me. But I did die. I rose up and went to drive We ordained pastors. Demons were cast out of people. We converted La Citra. The atmosphere was full of demons. Now Jesus is being preached They defended their case. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 13. Yakobo and after they had become silent, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Verse 13. Yakobo Arahaguruk. James rose up. Benedata Munyumve. Simoni. Simoni Yarinde. Peter. With the man of courage, he's in a Simon. Verse 14, he says, Simon, do you know why he used this word Simon? He did not use Peter. Peter Peter is Greek. And so he's speaking, he wants to address the Jews. He doesn't want to. to but, Peter, but if he had been in the Gentiles, among the Gentiles, he would have called him Peter because he wanted them to understand Greek. But here he uses the name Simon. Amen. Amen. Remember who is this James? You remember who he is? The brother of Jerusalem. He is the brother of Jesus, the senior pastor of the church of Jerusalem. Simon even the book of James was written for the Gentile Jew, the Jews who were in the diaspora. Let me explain to you the theology in the book of James. He wrote to them and said, Brethren, Jerusalem 
kuko bemeraga imihango ya Musa hamwe no kwizera niyo mpamvu yavuze ngo kwizera kutagira imirimo kuba gupfuye kuko bo yabemeraga ko imirimo na ikiza ariko pahoro yari yaranditse ko tudakizwa ni mirimo dukizwa niki no kwiza kuko bara abayuda igitabo cya yakobo ni gitabo kirimo amategeko ya Musa kikaba mu no kwizera uzasa kirimo kombinezo ya byombi yandikiye bene wabo bari mu mahanga muri diaspora his book of Je the book of James was written to the Jews who were in the diaspora and so they were mixed up with, they were caught between faith and works but he wrote them and said faith without works is dead so there was a mix of Judaism and salvation at the same time it was totally different from the letters of Paul ngo ni mureba ko rahabu yakoze imirimo myiza bwacha agakizwa Abraham yatsindishijwe ni mirimo igiye yatangaga isaka hanyuma imana ikaba donc yagiye abikora kuko yarazi audience ari mwabwira he audience ye naba yuda mu mitwe amategeko ya Musa gomba kuba uko nuwo Yesu turamwimeye ariko Musa wacu nawe tagomba kuba bwo rero abandikiye igitabo cha Yakobo ni igitabo cyandikiwe aba yuda gusa the book of James was written for the Jew, for the Jews alone. That's why it was referring to Abraham, Rahab, how she got saved by her works and how Abraham was justified by faith, but also because because he had sacrificed his son, wanted to sacrifice his son Isaac. He was only talking to the Jews alone. Ah, umurongo wa mbere. Yohana gice cha mbere umurongo Yakobo gice cha mbere umurongo wa mbere. Ngo Yakobo imbata y'Imana numwami Yesu Kristo ndabandikiye. Mwebwe abo mu miryango 12 yabatatanye ndabatashye. Urumva ico gitabo niko gitangira. James chapter 1 verse 1. James a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Abari muri diaspora ndabatashya. A greetings to you. Ikisi kitabo cy'abanyamahanga. This is not a book for the Gentiles. Ni bene wacu mwatata. It is for you brethren who are scattered. Mwaciye mu makuba menshi n'ibindi byinshi. You went through so much affliction and persecution. Voila. Ahanga rero iyo wumvisha umuntu nyine ni gitabo cyuramwumva. When you understand the author, then you understand their message in their book. Kwisubire mu byakozwe n'umwe 15. Deja ari yambakoreye mu gitabo cya Yakobo. Urumva ko mu 15 tugiye kwa Yakobo de. Let's go back to Acts 15 again. Ndabavangi. Murumva. Ndabujuje. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ngo Simoni ndiyigeza mwita nde Petero kubera iki Petero ni izina gikigira iki Simoni ni jyo yabayuda Shimoni byasobanura ngo ni umunani itangiriro rita Shimon mukiyuda Simon he is referring to him as Simon not as Peter because he is talking to Jews and does not want to use uh, the name Peter because it was Greek it was Gentile because Simon means eight or new beginning. Simon yaba tekerele juku imana ya tangi ya kugendere la banya mahanga. Ugo na wabi suyemo, uko abagawa wakia ya wabu gaga muri kilitire ya bayahudi. Iyo tuwa waga tukicha ye munama. Francis akavuga. Nje waka wirufuga, nda wana suwile mubza Francis ya vuze na aja vuki vzati. Na rangiza, kibinda ya kufuga kasu, aka haba anza, nguko kituwa za ya vivuze, aka visubira mo, na waka vuki, niko ba abri wa muri kiritire ya ba yudu, wanda kusubira mubzu wa kuba anjirije ya vuze, hanyumu gashaya mubza. Murabuzo mufa? Niyo manvi yu soma istuare nkiyi, yu gomba kumenya kontekste kiritirele, imicho ya abu kwa yarime. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Now, the reason why he's referring to what Paul what Simon had said before, it was because it was a cultural context for the Jews. When they were in the meeting, men in the meeting, when somebody wanted to make a point, they had to repeat what the previous speaker had spoken, and then they make their case. That was the process of their meeting discussions. <laughs> It is the same culture in Rwandan tradition when people are in the weddings of giving away the bride. Hey, Simon, you have taken a Simon, 
amagambo yabahanuzi ahura nibyo kuko byanditswe ngo hanyuma yibyo nzahindukira nongere nubaka inzu ya David yaguye nzasana hasenyutse hayo nihagarike kugira ngo abantu basigaye bashakane uwiteka nabanyamahanga bose bitirirwe izina ryanjye niko uwiteka avuga ari ukora ibyo byose abimenye abimenya uhereye kera kose nico gitumye kubwanje tegeka ni pasitera sitanga point de vie ni pasteur urusengero uruva nico gituma njewe pasteur yakobo urusengero mwese muraha ndategetse ngo tureke kurusha abo mu banyamahanga haleluya bahindukirire nabo ima ahubwo tubandikira urwandiko ngo bareke ibihumanya by'ibishushanyo bisengwa no gusambana nibinizwe inyamafu namaraso kuko herekera kose mose afite mu midugudu yose ababwirizi bye bisomerwa mu masinagogi ku masabatu yose amen verse 15 and with this the words of the prophets agree just as it is written, after this I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will, I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name. Says the Lord who does all these things known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are, who are turning to God but that we write to them to abstain from things polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses has throughout many generations those who preach him in every city, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. After James had spoken, what did he say? He said, let's remember what was prophesied by Amos. Amos chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. He said, God shall rebuild the tabernacle of David. The tabernacle of David is different from that of Moses. The tabernacle of Moses is different from that of Moses. The tabernacle of Moses had a lot of ceremonies for you to be able to enter it. You had the holy place and the holy of all. And only the high priest had to enter the holy the place. But the tabernacle of David in Zion, where the ark of the covenant was, there was no uh, curtain between the two places. All the people were allowed to come and sing to the Lord before the Ark of the Covenant. So there was no curtain between the two areas. Remember it was prophesied that time will come that God would rebuild the tabernacle of David which was used by the descendants of Ezra. Ezraf would sing 24 hours before the Ark of the Covenant that God would rebuild the tabernacle of David so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord that includes Gentiles and Jews. Ah, imani be mezako. God convinced them that Gentiles and Jews they shall come before the glory of God before the Ark of the Covenant. Jesus took away the curtain, the veil. Jesus took away the veil so that everybody can have access to God. The veil was torn into two. Everybody can enter the glory of God and worship. That's what he calls the tabernacle of David. You yourself can kneel down in your bedroom and pray and God will come where you are. That is the tabernacle of David. 
Wherever you are, God can be. Wherever you are, you choose to worship, God is there. And Jeremiah says, this is not only exclusive for us, the Jews, but also a share and a portion for the Gentiles. And so James was a pastor. He understood scripture. He referred to Amos chapter 9, verse 11 to 12. When he had said this, he said, one thing we require them to do, we will write to them a letter, which will have a few requirements to never be uh, to, to have pollute, to be polluted by idols. To tell them that if they get saved, let them never go back to which doctors. That is the first requirement. Second requirement. To abstain from sexual immorality. Because Gentiles, in their witchcraft practices, it includes uh, prostitution. Another thing. Let them do not. Tell them not to eat strangled animals. Every animal strangled, they should not eat its meat. For the soul of a creature is in its blood. They will have taken the soul of the, of the animal in their lives. And so we shall tell them to abstain from them. Another thing we no, tell them is to abstain from drinking blood of animals. Because Gentiles drink, drink blood a lot. But all other customs, Moses' customs has people who teach them in the synagogues every day. Let's just give them these requirements. To abstain from idol worship, to abstain from sexual morality, from eating strangled animals and from drinking blood. But the issues of circumcision, let's leave that. When the pastor said, I judge, in English he says, I judge, but in Kenya Rwanda he says, I command. You know what happened? Verse 22. Verse Verse 22, then it pleased the apostles and the elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, who was also named Barnabas, and Silas, leading men among the brethren. They wrote this letter by them. Ah. Why are they giving them two more men? It is so that when Paul and Barnabas arrive in Antioch, let the people not think it was a fake document from them. They took two men, a man called Judas, also named as Barsabbas, and Silas. They said, accompany them. This will authenticate the authenticity of this letter. This will justify what we said here. This Judah Uzamusanga he is one of the twelve apostles of the Lord. He is known as Thaddeus. Uh, Matthew chapter 10 verse 3. Hmm. Donc, he was one of the twelve disciples. Baramutuma. He was sent with Silas. Chapter 10 of Matthew, verse 3. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Lebius, Lebius whose surname was Thaddeus. Uh -huh. Acts chapter 1 verse 13. 
Are we together? Mm. Baso hoye baru ni rabaja mchumba choe juru aho Petero, Johanna, Yakobo, Andrea, Filipo, Thomas, Bartolome, Matayo, na Yakobo mwe na Lufayo, na Simone Zeloti, na Yuda mwe na Yakobo. Uyu Yuda niwe Barisaba, niwe Tadeo mwe na Yakobo. Ari kwa tari Yakobo uvuka na Yohana na Yakobo uundi. Uyu nawe niko yitwa. Ilizi ni ugomba kulimenya. Barisaba, changwe se Yuda, changwe se Tadeo. Kuko ala handuza asanga munuma za Yesu chumina zibiri. Tiu mve mwizi na Yuda. Bashize mo Tadeo. Hari ya mwini matayo. Niwe Tadeo. Hari kwa wali mchumba cho hejuru. Tibashize mo Tadeo. Bavuze Yuda. Aha munuma. Bagi ya kubo ugeleza. Bavuze wahi mwe barisaba. Ni wa unduma. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartimew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphius, and Simon, the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. This Judah is the one referred to as Barsabbas in the book of Acts. Amen. Amen. Ngoba jana nande undi na sira. Sira mura mwibuka. Paulo na sira. Eh? Mura mzibu kibzi. Amfete sira. Natadeo, changwe se, yuda. Bari muba, muba nuba komeye. Mwito roji yerusalem. There was also Silas who went with them. Silas and Judas were among the influential leaders in the church of Jerusalem. Silas continued on with Paul. His other name is Silvanus. The, name, the other name of uh, Silas is Silvanus. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, chapter 1, First one. Second Thessalonians chapter Paulo one, verse one. na Timoteo turabandikiye mwebwe bo mwitorero rya Batesalonike bari mu mana data wa twese mu mwami Yesu Kristo uyu Siruano niwe Sira Paul Silvanus and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ this Silvanus is Silas Turi kumwe are we together? Okay. Now you get that. Ekansome Yerusalemu na Antiochia kuko bundi basaga nabantu batinyana ariko noneho amatate yose ava avuyeho habaye ikiraro hagiye kuba ubukorana ubwumvikane c'était très important mugomba kubyumva donc église ya Antiochia niyo église missionnaire niyo yatugejeje ho butumwa église ya Yerusalemu niyo yari mama wabzaya ma église yose ariko hari hagati yo kutumvikana ku mukobwa na nyina Ndone wa bagiye kumvikana biciye muri ordonance yoherejwe ni torero rikuru imikora ni rigomba kuba gutye muranyumva wow they wrote this letter by them in other words they were writing to the church at antioch remember the church at antioch was the church that was the missionary church that brought the gospel to us the gentiles but the church in jerusalem was the mother church but there was a disconnect between the two churches. Now this letter is going to serve as a bridge between the mother church and the church of Gentiles. We, you must understand this. Bring back the map. We are writing to the church of Antioch and the church of Syria and Seleucia. Murabyumva Silicia Itoro ryikirikia ni 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 rimwe mu matoro ryitaruso ko ba Paul The church of Silicia is one of the churches include the churches in Tarsus where Paul comes from Ah dufite Kapodia we have Kapodia Hirya ya ho ni Galatia Above Kapodia we have Galatia Munanisikia you follow me Bagiye kwandika urwandiko So when they were writing the this letter Rekatu yangiziki 
ikibazo cyarimwe abanyamahanga bose urwandiko ruburwabo turangize info pour toute ibibazo by'abanyamahanga they said let's address this problem this issue for the gentiles once and for all for all gentile churches uva introduction rwandiko listen to the introduction of the letter intumwa nabene data bakuru turabatasha bene data umanyamahanga iyo jambo ndirigomba kubura mu banyamahanga gentiles mu bayunani Benedata bo mu banyamahanga muri Antiochia muri Syria muri Kirikia kuko twumvise yuko abantu bavuye muri twe bababwiye amagambo yo guhagarika imitima yanyu no kwitera gushidikanya kandi tutabibategetse amabisikia ni babandi ba evangelistes bagenda tunes itinera eh donc le de ambila donc les itinéra bijanye tungo bavuye ikigali munabuzumva neza na rwandiko bafite bakajya guca ibintu iriya ngo barakomeye ati abo baje tutabatumye babahagarika imitima babateza ibibazo twebwe turanditse intumwa nabakuru bitorero ah ibintu byari bigiye kuba clere vuga ngo clere Now to the bre- <laughs> <laughs> the apostles the elders and the brethren to the brethren who are of the gentiles they had to make sure that this word is mentioned gentiles in antioch syria and cilicia greetings since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words unsettling your souls saying you must be circumcised and keep, keep the law to whom we gave no such commandments these were itinerant preachers who just go everywhere and they go without any recommendation and now they come to terrify these people kumurungo ma 125 twashimye guhuza inama yo gutoranya abagabo no kuba batumaho babagabo ninde nande sira na yuda ari we barsabas tuba batumanye nabo donc aba bagabo baje uru rwandiko si fake aba bagabo barahamya ko ari ubukuri urumvikanye imana yacu ni ibimenyetso imana ivuze kindi igereka ikimenyetso it seemed good to us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul the 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 the, 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 the men they mention here is Barnabas and Silas nabo dukunda tuboherezanyije nabo dukunda bari naba nande na Paul nuko deja mu itoro rya Antiochia hari mu ibibazo bamwe batemera neza ibyo baporo bavuga ni ariko barahamya ko turabakunda ibyo biraza kubongera kuba ha credit nabizeraga ibi vya Yerusalemu barahita bakunda automatique ma Paul nande na Barnaba to add this statement uh, in reference to Barnabas and Paul as the beloved was to convince the people in Antioch to give more credit to Paul and Barnabas about these people because there had been problems and some doubts before voila abantu bahaza magara yabo kubwizina ry'umwami wacu Yesu Kristo uwo ninde ni Paul na Barnaba verse 26 men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that is Paul and Barnabas nuko dutumye yuda na sira nabo bwabo bazababwira nururimi bimwe nibi we have therefore sent judas and silas who will also report the same things by word of mouth ijambo nkunda ri 228 my favorite word is on verse 28 go umwuka wera hamwe natwe for it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us these people worked with the Holy Spirit just like I work with Charles here. The Holy Spirit, it seemed to go to the Holy Spirit and to us. Listen to this. Can you say boldly that the Holy Spirit <laughs> and myself have confirmed that? In other words, you and the Holy Spirit meet and talk and then take resolutions and say, you, myself, and the Holy Spirit have agreed to this. 
na akakano karanet ngumuka wera hamwe natwe twashimye kutabikoreza indi mutwaro wose keretse ibi bikwiriye for it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden and than these necessary things ah umuk wewe numugore wawe hamwe numuka wera mwaraye mugiye inama Imagine you and your wife last night and the Holy Spirit had a meeting. Listen to this. Somebody would say, I was with my children and the Holy Spirit and we had the discussion with the Holy Spirit in this meeting. Imagine somebody saying, we were in a meeting with our pastor and together with the Holy Spirit, we agreed that. Imagine such a statement. I request you by the mercies of God, always consult the Holy Spirit. Work with the Holy Spirit before you make your decision. Now listen. Listen. But that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourself from these, you will do well. Farewell. What does this mean? In the first century, the church had a secretary. Who would write these things? But there are other churches that have no secretaries. <laughs> there are others who have a secretary without the Holy Spirit. But if you have the Holy Spirit, you have the secretary, you have the pastor, you have the apostle, the church is whole. So what do you think wrote the, the letter? Secretary. It must have been a secretary. And then he said, farewell. Verse 30. So when they were sent off, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the letter. When they had read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. Listen to me. There was a lot of noise for celebration. People had been confused. It has come from the root of Hallelujah. There was such great joy in the church. People were walking with a burden in their heart that they are not, they are not saved. Oh, we are saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was incredible joy. The yoke on their shoulder was off now. We are okay with it. We don't want to be in immorality. But are we really saved? <laughs> hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The church rejoiced. Verse 32. Listen. Listen. Nasira wo hereje yuda numwe mu ntumwa 12 sira numwe mu ba elda mu ba mu bayobozi bakomeye mu itorero ari kuretsi byo bari bafite impano y'ubuhanuzi donc bavuganaga numwuka we bo hereje abantu bishoboke ko ari sira wahanuye ravuga ngo ibyo muvuze imana irabyemeye none ko ari bubihanuye ni mugende na yuda akavuga ngo nanje umwuka arambuye ko ari byo hanyuma bagiye kwandika ravuga ngo twebwe numwuka wera wavugiye muri inde sira na yuda but started to now Judas and Silas themselves being prophets also. This means on top of Judas being an apostle was also a prophet. And Silas was an elder in the church in Jerusalem. Possibly when they were deliberating in the meeting, Silas by the Spirit of God said, the Holy Spirit says to me, let's do this. And so they did. That's what they say to us together with the Holy Spirit. 
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 32. Yuda na Sira kuko nabo barabahanuzi bahuguza bene data magambo menshi barabakomeza bamaze iminsi bene data babasezerera mahoro ngo basubire kubagize gute kubabatumye entre parenthese ariko Sira we ashima gusigarayo ati ndaje imana yankinguriye umuryango reka nifugire ubutumwa haleluya Yuda subirayo Unda sigari kwa ti ewa na wewe kwenye ndani wewe apotri muri uchumi na wabiri yari anjewe anjewe na abaho wana sefiwe sara. Now Judas and Silas themselves, being prophets, also exalted and strengthened the brethren with many words. And after they had stayed there for a time, they were sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles. However, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Paulo na Barnaba. Nabo baguma muri Antiochia bigisha abantu bababwira ijambo ry'Imana umwami Yesu bafatanyirije nabandi benshi amen Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also bavandi brethren ikibazo cy'ambere kirakemutse the first problem is resolved itorero ribaye rimwe the church becomes one now. Jerusalem accepts Antioch. Antioch respects Jerusalem. Silas remains in, in Antioch. Listen. In chapter 16, Paul went with Silas to Europe. It's a chain of reactions. In chapter 26, we talk, chapter 16, we talk about Paul's second missionary journey. This was his first journey. In theology, there is a course about Paul's missionary journeys. But for you, you are studying free of charge. You are not paying any tuition. You can't leave this evening without paying me for this. Brethren, this is how the church came to Rwanda. Just remember, the church of Antioch is a missionary church. It is the church that sent missionaries and receives others. The gospel is about to spread to the whole world. It's got to Europe, Africa. to Africa. Hey, hallelujah. 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 Let's give him glory. Would you stand up for prayer? Thank you for coming today. Will I see you again tomorrow? God, accompany your children. Take them home safely. May your Holy Spirit do good to them. Strengthen them in your word. As they read Acts, let them understand. May the Lord bless you in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen.
Cause we're 